listen, when you blow it, don't, don't go stick your head in the sand. That's the time you just go, Lord, well, I guess, I guess I am a sinner, saved by grace. And I agree with you. My thoughts, deeds, or actions, or whether it's a sin of omission or commission, would you forgive me? Lord, I, I want to walk with you. And you know what he actually does? Forgives you. Hey friends, welcome to the Victor Marks podcast with Victor Marks, founder of All Things Possible Ministries. Welcome to the show where we bring you real conversations facing life's hard truths, stories of redemption, and the latest from the front lines. Whether you're on the road, getting your day started, or finally settling in, we've got an exciting new episode planned for you. So let's dive into today's show. In this live message from the Ignite Conference, Victor shares from personal testimony overseas and coming out of 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 2, about the importance of being rooted in the Spirit of Christ and His Word to grow in the courage of the life God is calling men to live in these days. Even in uncertainty, evil does not have the last say, and God is faithful to guide those who He has purposed each step of the way. Here is Victor Marks with more on today's message. At a time where people would be fearful to get together, we all had to choose what's the best and most right thing to do. And it's come to encourage one another because the time we live in, how many of you would agree, it's kind of unique now. Yeah, once that Corolla carnivorous virus hit, whatever <clears throat> they're calling it, uh, <laughs> Uh, the, I think the technical name is COVID-19. Is that what, they're, is that what they've labeled it? I call it Christ over viruses and infectious disease. 1-9. Okay. Joshua 1-9. <clears throat> Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Don't be frightened. Don't be dismayed. For the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. Man, how many times have I had to lean on that scripture when the opportunity to go overseas came up again? Because it's all, it's all fun and games until ISIS is uh, trying to hurt your feelings. <clears throat> and you're prepping for another trip and uh, it's a lot easier to come up with a whole lot of reasons why you should just stay home. And none of it matters if the Lord is saying, but I said, go. I was saying, but Lord, you know, really? And, uh, you know, I tell people the first opportunity we have to go. Well, let me ask you, how many of you uh, have seen the Free Burma Ranger movie? Anybody? Yeah, with Dave Eubank. Uh, I encourage all of you, if you haven't seen that movie, when it comes out again, it was in theaters, but when it comes out... Watch the movie. Uh, Dave is, is one of my closest friends, and I was in Burma with him, and I actually invited him. I gave him a call on a sat phone while he was doing some sneaky stuff. I said, Dave, you ought to come over here to Iraq. He goes, man, there's, I'd love to. And only God, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a miracle story of how he even got there. <clears throat> and then uh, what God has done through. But Dave's a funny guy, former SF guy. You know, special force guys, they beg, borrow, and steal anything they can to get the job done. And he's like, hey, he called me. He goes, hey, uh, we're in a position right here. We need an armored vehicle, Victor. And I said, well, yeah, I'm, uh, okay. I, I, yeah. He goes, you know, we like spending your money. So <clears throat> I said, okay, well, let me, I got to raise the money to get a vehicle. He said, okay. So I did, I, uh, I, I, I <laughs> We got a video, and I, I text him and said, hey, man, make sure don't get this thing shot up. I got to pay for it. It's been hit 17 times. 17 times. Joshua, hey, thank you, brother. Thank you. I thought you were a security issue for a second. Thank you very much. Joshua, I wear this thing proudly. 17 times it's been shot. And if you want to see a funny video, just go online and Google World's fastest answer to prayer against ISIS. 
It's Dave in my vehicle. He's got his team. They're, they're creeping through. I think it was Bashika right outside of Mosul. And he goes, Lord, please protect us from the enemy's weapons, especially RPG. Within two seconds, shh, boom, one hits right in front of the vehicle. And he goes, thank you, Lord. <laughs> and then they turn left. <clears throat> You know what, I, I, I love this event because it's men excited to be men. Maybe in a culture that ain't excited for us to be men. How many of you can agree with that? Yeah, right? Uh, there's, there's confusion and there's, there's spiritual warfare against it. The scripture I wanna use today is 1 Kings 2, 2. And uh, I like it because it's, it's David speaking. And he says, uh, David's talking to his son, Solomon. And he said, as for me, I'm going to go the way of all the earth now. He knew it was his time to go. And he tells, this is what he tells his son. He said, be strong. Act like a man. Be strong. And act like a man. That goes on to say, observe what the Lord is requires of you. Can you imagine having that conversation with your son when it's time? What would you tell him? Here's David, a fierce warrior, uh, a man after God's own heart, and this is what he tells him. Son, be strong and act like a man. I mean, at first you think, well, what did he have? Solomon have girl dresses in his closet or something? <laughs> Knock it off, Solomon. No, it's it's the statement behind it that means so much, and we need it more now than ever in our culture. Uh, I was recently going through an airport, had uh, one of my dogs with me. I'm walking through, and then uh, this guy and a gal walk up to me. True story. And the gal goes, hey, can I pet your dog? I said, well, thank you for asking. You sure may, because our dogs are trained to have women and children pet them. But there's a big sign that says men do not pet. So the girl, she, young lady, she pets the dog. Oh, sweet. And then the guy, probably in his early 20s, he goes to pet the dog. And I said, whoa, I, I wouldn't. And in front of everybody, he goes, why not? I said, well, it says men don't pet and you're a man. And, uh, <laughs> and in front of everybody, he yells, who are you to judge my gender? <laughs> At that point, I was looking for video cameras, like this is a good one, the whole, the whole gender thing. <laughs> Oh, you're not joking. And he goes, you have no right to judge my gender. <clears throat> I'm going, well, you kind of, you need a shave, one. I mean, that's kind of an indicator. <laughs> and then he makes this big stink out of it, y'all. He keeps, ah, and people, it's an airport. They're all looking. I finally said, hey, man, calm down. Slow the roll. I'll let my dog decide whether you're male or female. Yeah, he didn't pet her. So, <laughs> you went sashaying off. No, I, I <clears throat> but, hey, we live in confusing times, okay? <clears throat> and and uh, if we're honest, a lot of it's our fault. I mean, I, I used to be with y'all, belly aching about millennials. How did the millennials come about? us, because we gave them what they wanted all the time, <clears throat> including trophies and medals and participation and whatever. <clears throat> the only way we can stop and course correct millennials is stop giving them what they want, make them earn it.
If you're a millennial here today, you're welcome. So, <laughs> no, I think all men feel better when you know you've earned something and gone about it even the hard way, the value you have. I just think it's a great scripture. He says, be strong. What type of strength is out there? One, there's physical strength. And you know what? I, I, think it's, I think it's wise that we as men never stop trying to become or maintain some element of physical conditioning and strength. There's a lot of excuses why. Well, I'm this, I'm that, I'm old, I'm that. I'm, hey, I think we should just, it doesn't matter. The, the day if I'm ever confined to a wheelchair or I'm, I'm barely making it, I still want to have enough in me where I can just, hey, poof, at least one. <laughs> at least one. My wife may come out and I may be 95 on a bag. <clears throat> what are you doing? You know what I'm doing. <clears throat> So physically strong is good, and actually uh, pushing ourselves to do the best that we can. Um, I remember Dave Eubank out. That, he's one of my closest friends, so I talk about him a lot. I'm in. Uh, we're in Burma, and I am. Uh, I got the sickness, the mosquito bite, something or whatever. I mean, I was I was so sick, I was impressed, and uh, <clears throat> and and. It, Dave wakes me up about two in the morning because I was burned up with fever. And he's like, hey. And Dave's a rough, I mean, this guy's ultra marathoner, speaks multiple languages. I mean, he is, if, if, if we can ever get Dave over here, uh, you want to hear him speak. And uh, Dave, he wakes up, he's like, yeah, you got fever. Oh, he goes, let me pray for you. And just tenderly and compassionately prays for me. And uh, it didn't work. So I got up the next morning. But it sure felt good to have somebody pray for me. I, I think I was hallucinating at that moment. And uh, literally. So I, I got up the next morning. Dave goes, okay, it's your morning on the grinder. It's the jungle. It's dirt. It's, I got to train guys combatively with how to use edge weapons because they do it a lot. And uh, I said, Dave, I, can we just wrote, change the schedule? Can I get a half a day? He goes, no, no, you're up. I said, Dave, no, no. He goes, you got this. And I literally, I'm walking out just going, I guess this is the time I'm going to be super humbled. And I see these young Burmese rangers, humanitarians who are fighting manifestations of wickedness and darkness in their country. And and they're ready. They're ready to do hand to hand, come out of training. I'm like, oh my gosh. And the heat's beating on me. And I'm, I'm, I look at Dave. I said, Dave, you sure? He goes, you, you got it. He goes, oh, by the way, they're going to test you first. And I was like, Dave. And he climbs up on a rock. He was like, it's the way they do it here. You're going to have to fight some of them first. Like, you are a sick man. <laughs> and sure enough, I'm going to do blade work. And I'm like, okay. So 150 of them gather around. And some of their little studs come up. And three of them, I think it was three, jumped on me like that. And I started getting, I mean, I started getting beat pretty good. It was quite fun. Because there's a certain switch that happens to a man where survival kicks in and you feel so alive. <laughs> it takes a lot to get there for some of us sometimes. But uh, I remember in that moment of me trying to hold a guy down and he came up and he headbutt me. And my eyes did like that. I said, oh yeah. And then I drew a knife, a training blade. But I hit them, boom, 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 bam, bam, bam. Then three of them, they were, I was like, more. Come on, more. And Dave's like, there he is. <laughs> I said, oh my gosh. i never forget Dave, as a close friend, said, Victor, never stop being in shape. Don't let yourself get out of shape. 
I thought it was an odd thing to say, but what a great exhortation for us to push ourselves to the max. <laughs> Has no value on us as far as our walk with the Lord in the sense of our value before Christ, but we don't hear that enough. And we of all men should want to do our very best. Emotionally, we should be strong. The only way to do that is to go through hard times. I wish there was an easier way, but there's not. When you go through hard times, embrace it. Marcus, I, I think he put that well today, didn't he? <laughs> and that is him. Trust me. <clears throat> he texted me, <clears throat> he texted me a while back. He goes, hey, I just finished speaking on the stage and I talked about you. I said, okay, he goes, if you don't like it, too bad, I'm gonna do it more. <laughs> I said, well, I just talked about you today. <laughs> and y'all didn't get to hear the full story, but he did get, he did get electrocuted by lightning. But he actually grabbed the, like a steel rod, went out and found a tree in a big old field with thunder and lightning, and he grabs a tree. Come on, come on, boom, dude. The tree gets struck, it blows him down. He walks into his house. Melanie, his wife goes, Marcus, did you just get hit by lightning? He goes, yes, he's smoking. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Spiritually be strong. That's the most important. And that, that requires a discipline and a level of faith to study, to show that self approved. And look at me. I, I told a young man today to come in, visit. He's like, hey, so good to see you. He says, what's going on? What, what's happening in your world? And I said, ah, oh, my devotional life really sucks right now. He's like, oh, okay. I said, is that too honest for you? I said, man, I'm, oh, it's the hardest thing for me just to get time with the Lord. I can do a lot for him, but man, sometimes I just miss him. That's worth pausing for a minute because I'll tell you, one of the greatest things you need to do and should do consistently is open the word of God and just sit down and commune with him. Man. And how many of you know that's one of the hardest things to do? Raise your hand. Look, we're not alone. I think there's a very real devil that hates the fact that you would want to spend time in God's word and communicate with the Lord. He hates it. So I'm just honest about it. Sometimes it makes people uncomfortable. Uh, or people, how can I pray for you? Pray that I get in the Word and spend a lot of time with the Lord. I need to. Hmm? Pray. Prayer. It's just talking to God. Sometimes we feel intimidated because we're sinful or we've sinned. But you know what the Bible says? When you, when you fall short, you get back up. He says, if you sin, if you confess your sin... He's faithful and just to forgive you of all unrighteousness, especially y'all up there, because I know that section. Y'all got to be wild up there. Yeah. Listen, when you blow it, don't, don't go stick your head in the sand. That's the time you just go, Lord, well, I guess, I guess I am a sinner, saved by grace. And I agree with you. My thoughts, deeds, or actions, or whether it's a sin or omission or commission, would you forgive me? Lord, I, I want to walk with you. And you know what he actually does? Forgives you. Uh, early as a Christian, I think I used to think of God with a hammer waiting to smack me. And yet, maybe it's because of my upbringing. How many of you don't know my story? Raise your hand real quick. Okay, just to let you know, my father was a drug dealer and a pimp who didn't claim me as his kid. I went to 14 different schools, lived in 17 different houses. I was abused as a kid and left her dead in a commercial cooler. 
I had to have 123 visits to a trauma specialist in nine months. I've been on Depakote, Depakine, Prozac, Zoloft, Lithium, Buspar. I started drugs in the sixth grade to try to escape the pain. Didn't know who my identity was. Hated humanity. All I wanted to do was inflict pain back on people who hurt me. And yet God, he was always reaching out to me. And when I finally surrendered to him, actually I surrendered to him through my biological dad who didn't claim me. The drug dealing pimp. The last I heard of him, he was a practicing warlock. How's that for a dad? Bring him to, bring him to school. Show and tell, this is my daddy. He'll sell you drugs and pimp your mama. <laughs> and yet, he wrote me a letter while I was still in the United States Marine Corps. He said, I know I've never been there as a dad for you. And he apologized for it. And he stepped into his role as a man and as a dad. He said, I know you think I'm crazy. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, we, we got crazy. I mean, his dad, my grandfather, I never met. He died in a mental hospital. And then my dad went to the same mental hospital for homicidal tendencies. I just figured we had a timeshare in it. I said, well, my season is coming up. And yet it was him that wrote me this letter and said, I know you think I'm crazy, but I'm crazy for Jesus Christ this time. And he said he had got born again. <laughs> oh, you can clap, but I didn't believe him. <laughs> I said, what is the angle on this? He said, well, come down and visit me. And I took leave of absence. I, I went down and I went to, he invited me to go to church. I was like, I don't know church. I've seen the type of men that go to church, not interested. Because it's such a lie from the enemy that you can't have a warrior's heart and a mindset and be a Christian man and follow God. It's the complete opposite. It's the complete opposite. As a matter of fact, God wants men to live full throttle, engaged, and probably traditionally in some seasons in the church in America, all the church was trying to do is make men good. Change the behavior, make them good. And I'll tell you, man, I don't want to be remembered for being good. I just, I, I'd love to be remembered for being good as being a man. and Letting God use my life the way that he saw fit. Because every one of us have a purpose. Every one of you. I mean, every one of you. Now, you may be looking for a mission and seek God, and, and your mission may need to be a coach. Uh, the biggest mission you can have is to be a husband and a dad right at home, right? All uh, right, maybe God, I know there's a handful of Five Stones brothers here that got a table. Uh, I came and spoke, and later, the first time, they were like, hey, man, we like to go overseas. I was like, hey, if God wills it, he'll do it. Guess what? They put a team together. They've been overseas a couple of times doing great stuff. Whatever it is, God will show you the mission, but you have a purpose, every one of you, young and old. And look, if you're old, stop. Don't, don't get the victim mentality. Like, well, I used to and I can't. My gosh, the older saints, I think that's some of the most dangerous Christians in the world. When you're limited to what you can do physically, but your ability to hear God and communicate and pray, that's like being a forward observer calling in airstrikes on targets. That's another prayer that was answered. You're sitting up all alone, maybe one o'clock in the morning, just like somebody was calling in something, sitting on a hill, nobody can see him. Huh. When, I, when God called me to forgive people in my past, after I got born again through my dad at that church, and, and hey, actually, my dad became my best man in my wedding when, when, when I married my wife. God can do that. He can restore. 
But I had to forgive and trust God, right? But I'll never forget, I went back to a house where I was abused really bad, you know, dunked in a tub until I passed out and electrocuted and all that type of stuff. And I, the Lord said, you go back to that house. I said, whoa. And my stepfather who had all done that, he was actually in prison. And I remember knocking on that door. And as the door opened, I was like, oh my gosh, what's gonna happen? I was ready for anything. It was an older lady opened the door. She said, may I help you? I was like, oh, let me put the gun down. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. I didn't know what was going to come out. And she, I told her who I was. I said, I used to live in this house oh, like 30 years ago. Whatever. And she goes, what's your name? I told her, she goes, I bought this home from your stepfather. And then she said this, bad things happened here, didn't they? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, we heard a lot of stories of the bad things that happened, and I'm sorry. My family, we had to escape one night through a window and never came back. She said, when I bought this house, there was a lot of y'all stuff left over here. We gave it to the Goodwill, but she goes, look at me, I never met this lady. She goes, I found some photos, and I kept them. Kept one in particular of your children. She invited me in the house. She went and found it and pulled out this photo of me and my brothers and sisters. She said, I've kept this all these decades and prayed for y'all. I said, ma'am, Thank you. That's me. Your prayers sustain me. And there I am. We shed some tears. Well, she cried. I, I leaked. <laughs> you know, man tears. They, they repel off your chin and a little crawl away. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. God used that woman who... I'd never met. You don't know the power of your prayers, older saints. Pray. Be vicious and violent in your prayers. Man, be vicious and violent. That's, it works. So he tells us, be strong then act like a man. I can also be translated, just be brave. Hey, not to hurt any of your feelings, but if I do, you're welcome. Don't be afraid to step on the man scale and give an honest assessment of where you're at with your life. It's okay. If you come up short, that's when you ask God, help me. Help me to be a better man. He created you. And we always blame Eve for the ills of our world. But in that garden, when she's being tempted by that snake, when he's talking to her, where was Adam? If someone talked to my woman, if I'm in a room, I'm turning around and go, hey, talking a little long there to my woman. <laughs> Let me find out what this conversation is about. What's up, y'all exchanging like recipes or something, dude? <laughs> Knitting techniques? No, hey, I think if Adam would have been on point, he would have heard that voice and said, not familiar with that one in the garden. And went and seen the snake and said, <laughs> no. If he would have been on point, I'd, <laughs> man, I said, Lord, if that would have been me, I would have made a pair of boots and a purse <laughs> and a belt to go with it. I, you know, I was like, Lord, but it is what it is. But he, he was passive. He should have rejected passivity and engaged. And we as men, there is no other time for us better to engage as men than now. If you're waiting for an excuse or a reason, the reason is now. Let me, let me remind you of last time I was here, why our world and our country needs men more than ever. How many of you remember this girl, Nora? Beautiful little girl in Cambodia who got attacked, viciously beaten, raped, Battery acid was poured on her face. 
and then he cut off one of her hands. Our safe house in Cambodia, when we got the word, that was the condition she was in. I, and I said, I, if y'all reckon, let's know. We gotta save her life. So we went and got her. We had a team get her out of that or she would have died. A lot of things happened, a lot of prayer. We engaged. We got funding. We did what needed to be done. Gave her life-saving operations. And actually, when we put her in a hospital, when this rich guy, this wealthy guy, when he found out he was alive, she was alive, he sent three guys to kill her. And our team lead there, a female, said, hey, I think we need to move her where she is and get some guns up. I said, do it. So they never got to her. <laughs> the next slide. This is her now. And by the way, she's an orphan. Her and her siblings are an orphan. Her parents died. And then, guess what? All the time we do this, she is not a Christian. She's a Buddhist. But should that stop us from helping? Should we be limited to just helping Christians or anybody? Uh, the Bible says even love our enemies. Well, guess what? We, uh, we, our team loved her, took her in, provided everything for her, and she had given her life to Christ. And you want to see something cool is her turning the pages in a Bible with her little nub. And the Lord opened the doors uh, through some friends of ours, uh, Mark Geist from 13 Hours. Some of you know Mark. And, uh, and he was like, hey, let's fly her over here and get a prosthetic for her. Get her hand. I said, let's do it. So we did. She's getting fitted up there in Yankeeville around Massachusetts area, MIT somewhere. And then, uh, we, and then now look at her back home. Praying, she's now praying and working and uh, helping other girls who've been abused, trapped. All because men stood up. Men stepped in the gap. Well, I'm gonna close with that today to remind you our roles are absolutely critical now. Your wives, your children, your fellow workers, people are going to look to you to be a source of strength and calm, a voice of reason, a man of action, and wisdom in the time we live in right now. So, <laughs> people are freaking out. And you know what? I told them, well, God's still in control. Either he is or he ain't. And me <laughs> going to Costco and buying 6,000 rolls of toilet paper, I don't know if that's going to change the whole situation. <laughs> Go to the Middle East. They don't use toilet paper. They're okay. <laughs> They've been doing it for a while. <clears throat> you guys... Man, what an opportunity. And I'll, I'll end with this. God's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And maybe, just maybe, God has kept me alive out of everything we've done and still do. My wife and I led a team into Syria to an ISIS confinement camp. Actually, not that long ago, since the last time I saw y'all, 70,000 ISIS wives and children. And we have seen God protect us again and again and again and again. One day I counted 40 mortars being rained in on us. At a certain point, you just laugh. Because you know you're aggravating your angels that are protecting you. My wife said, when I go to heaven, my guardian angel is going to go, hey. <laughs> I'm going to get up and go. I had that coming. No, we're good. <laughs> Glad I got this new body. <laughs> Maybe God has kept me alive just to show y'all that no matter how much fear reigns in this country, in this world, and I'm gonna raise your hand if you, you knew the fear of ISIS, seeing all the heads being cut off, the fear that was, let me tell you what, God's in control. 
and men of God are not to fear, but to be brave and courageous. Brave and courageous. If you lack it, ask God for it. He'll help you. And this, I think, is a symbol that in the end, evil will not win, but God will. No matter what, no matter what. They didn't need this anymore. So, I'm not talking about being foolish, I'm just talking about being brave. Ask God. And I'll tell you what, I'm not even the brave one in my family. I just have moments of it as an ordinary man that God has allowed me to do extraordinary things because it was my wife that went with me on the first pump into Iraq and then many others. And when I was like, where do you want to go? She said, because when you find the girls that have been held captive by ISIS, and you will, she goes, they'll need a hug. And you can't give them a hug, but I can. I said, you're willing to risk your life in ISIS territory in order to hug girls who have been held? She goes, yes. And then she looked at me and goes, what's the worst that can happen? We die? <laughs> and I was like, yes, death, the dying thing. You know what my wife said? She looks at me and goes, but then don't we win? Don't we win? Woo! <clears throat> Some of you want a different wife. Stick to the one you got or you'll be in Iraq and Syria often. My wife's like, I'd, be, I'd rather be married and be a widow than be married to a coward. So go and come back with your shield or on it, but bring glory to God, honey. That's what you were made for. And so are you. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much, God, for the truth of your word and help us to be strong, help us to be courageous, help us to act like men in a time where our country and our world need men. God, you never would call us to perfection. You only tell us to run the race in the right direction. Thank you that no matter how much we sin, fall short, God, you're always there to pick us up, to clean us up, and say, get back to it. Because our relationship with you is built on love, not condemnation and not hatred. And we thank you for that, Lord. God, I pray for any man here that may be struggling Maybe some that actually they don't have that strength, that supernatural and the courage that you give because they don't know you in a personal way. And God, maybe today's the day you're drawing them through this weekend to surrender their life to you. Hey, if that is you, I'd love to pray with you. If, if you know you need to surrender your life to Christ, ask for forgiveness for your sins and have the hope of heaven, let me pray for you right now. If that is you, lift your hand up real high so I can see you. God bless you and you and you. God bless y'all on the back, over here. How about up top? Anybody raise your hand? I'll pray for you. God bless you. God bless y'all. Good, good. Father, in the name of Jesus, for everyone that's indicated their need, Lord, forgive them, cleanse them. Lord, I pray they would make you the Lord of their life and they would take the gift of salvation, which is free. Thank you for dying on that cross for us, Lord, which proved the love you have for us. And God, I pray for every other man here and those watching that you would strengthen them to do what you've called them to do, to run the race, to know you and make you known. Thank you, Lord, for these mighty men of valor. And it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us for today's episode. We'd love to stay connected with you and invite you to the conversation beyond this podcast. You can check out more of the work we're doing around the world at victormarks.com, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all linked in the show notes. Be sure to drop us a comment in the review section if today's show has impacted you in any way or if there's anything you'd like to hear more of. We're always encouraged to hear from you. Thanks for spending your time with us. Until next time, 